Hey, it's Allie with Seattle Coffee Gear, and today we are reviewing the Rocket Espresso R60. Now this is towards the higher end of the lineup of the Rocket machines. Um, and if you can tell, immediately you notice something different. This model in particular can come in the classic stainless steel case, or it has the soft touch black powder coating. Um, on the back too, obviously you can't see it right now, on the back, it has different lettering than the other models. The other models will have a little plaque with like a plate almost of the rocket. This one has the commercial letters that they typically put on the commercial machines. It kind of has the same layout, a little bit cleaner, looks nice. Um, another thing I can tell you about this machine is that it is a dual boiler, so just like the R58, but when you step up to this model, you get stainless steel boilers. So that is definitely a plus. There's also a whole bunch more packed into this machine in particular. So we'll kind of go into an overview of what it has. So you notice on the side here, this is kind of what their PID looks like on some of the other models like the R58. This one actually has a little stand clicked onto the machine because it is capable of pressure profiling. So this kind of tells you what's going on with your machine, what pressure it is applying for how much time. It even has the temperature, as you can see here, for the brew boiler. And whenever you start pulling your shot, it will also start to have a shot timer here. So for example, you can see it clicking up. Another thing that you can do with this machine that you can't do with other ones, it does have an app that connects to it. Now, before you think that's super complicated, it actually makes using this machine a lot easier. You can connect it through a Wi-Fi connection and then it gives you a couple of other features as well, like an auto on, which this is probably one of the only semi-auto machines handmade machines that does have a feature like that. So you can program it to come on at like six in the morning or whenever you wake up. And you also can program an auto off as well. So say, you know, uh, you get up in the morning at six, you wanna have your coffee at 6.30, you leave for work by eight. Um, you can basically program it to come on at six. So it's nice, hot, heated up, ready to go, and then turn off and you won't have to worry about even messing with it or touching with it. You also can tell it has this extra little light down here at the bottom. So that will be illuminated whenever it is in standby mode, which is basically the power reserve. Um, and this light will activate whenever it does start to turn on and warm up. So you'll notice that whenever um, you walk up to the machine. So this machine comes with some of the standard rocket accessories like the manual here. So you'll see that. Also comes with a single spout, your polish rag, a set of your cleaning tablets. So you'll run out of those quickly because you need to use it once a week to keep your machine working like you should. So grab an extra uh, uh, a set of that whenever you're ordering your machine and your back flushing uh, blind basket, if you will, here. So all of that comes inside the box. Other thing that this machine has that other ones don't, they actually have upgraded the tamper for you. So you get the nice, excuse me, the nice premium rocket tamper. Probably one of my favorite tampers that we carry. I just really like the weight um, and the size is perfect for my hands. But so I like that they give you that, just a little bit of added premium feel and touch to the machine. Now, I think we've kind of gone over most of the options and an overview, so I think it's time we brew a drink. So what I'm gonna do for this particular drink is I'm going to use one out of the three standard profiles that it comes with. So it has um, A, B, and C are the profiles, and I'm on profile B. And the way this one is set up, it's actually going to do four bars of pressure, as you can see here on the, um, side panel, if you will, for eight seconds. And then after that, it's going to bump up to the full nine bar pressure. Now, you can make any recipe you could dream up or think of while you're doing this, and you can get really specific. I thought for the purpose of this video, we'll just stick with what it comes with to be simple so we're not doing too complicated. Um, but if you like to tinker around, you can definitely get in there and kind of have it programmed. Nice thing about that style of setup, Easy to remember, easy to see what you changed, repeatable, so that makes it really nice. So what I'm gonna do for this drink, profile B, I'm gonna do a split shot. So I'll do one shot by itself, half of it by itself, so I can taste it as espresso. And the other half I'm going to put into 
a latte or a cappuccino, because this is more like a cappuccino cup, um, so I can show off the steam. Another feature I forgot to mention, it can be separated, so it, since it's a dual boiler, the service boiler is what activates the steam and the hot water, and the brew boiler is separate. So you can actually have the steam boiler turn off, say you don't drink milk, or me, most of the time in the morning, I'm doing just a shot of espresso to start my day, and I don't really wanna wait the 30 minutes or so it takes to warm up, because it does take a little while. The brew boiler can heat up pretty quick by itself, and you can turn off that service boiler, turn it on whenever you want. So you can do that in the menu here or in the app. I'm gonna hold down this pro, uh, program button, or the P button here, for a little bit, and when I release, it switches over to the language, hit it again. You can pump this machine, it is a rotary pump, um, so that's gonna be more like a commercial grade. Lasts a little bit longer, it's gonna be a little bit quieter. So you can change that here. And then temperature, Celsius to Fahrenheit. Service boiler, this is what I was talking about earlier. So you can turn this off, which will basically shut down the function for the hot water and the steam and just do your brew boiler here, so if you're just doing espresso or something like that. Now, you can also adjust the temperature here. I've got my uh, brew boiler at 221, which I'm actually gonna turn down just a bit, but they actually have a conversion chart in there so you can see what that comes out at the actual brew head. And then the service boiler temperature, I like to turn that all the way up because I like super powerful quick steam. So it's at the max of 259 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. So then after that, obviously it'll time out if you're not pushing the buttons frequently and take you to the normal menu. So you can read what's going on here in the screen or in the app. So let me open that so you can get an idea. So one thing you'll notice whenever you open the app, you see the connect and disconnect here for your, your Wi-Fi signal that the machine sends out. So you can turn the machine on standby or off. The service boiler, you see I have it on. Water supply, basically everything in that little um, side panel you can access from here. And this is actually where you can select the profile you want. So I want profile B, but you can select A or C. And then I'm gonna go back to show you the boiler temperature, you can change that here as well. And the automatic on, my favorite feature. So I have the clock set up there. Start function, I want it to turn on at, whoops, to on, on at 8 a.m. Okay, setting that, and then off at 11, 9 a.m. or 10 a.m., sure. Now it will do that, and in the morning when I walk up to the machine, it's ready to go. Perfect. So this is set up the way I want it to, and I do not want to mess up what I have set up, so I'm going to go ahead and put this away. And let's make a drink. Now I am dairy intolerant, so we are going to be using an almond milk that I like today. It froths pretty well, but no promises on how beautiful my latte art will be. I am using the Akaya Pearl S here to weigh my shot out and the Faustino Rockets newer grinder that I do enjoy. Now with a machine like this, you definitely wanna get a high quality grinder because you will not be able to take advantage of the machine itself if you're not being able to access all those flavors. And the first step to doing that is in your grinder. So this came out at 18.7, which typically I'd like to stick with 18, but I don't really like touching my espresso, so I'm gonna let it go and I will make up for it in my output weight. And a new function that we have in the Akaya Pearl S as well is the espresso mode. So this is just the classic like brew mode and that's the auto tear. This is the one I want, so it will tear for me whenever I set my glass down. And let's do this. We're just gonna brew straight into our cups today. Let it tear in a second. I'm not that patient, sorry. Um, okay, so let me not 
knock this over. Perfect. And then we, I will step out of the way so you can see what's going on with the brew pressure over here. I think it was dropping right around eight seconds or so last time, so that looks about right. And you can see it switched to the second step, the second breakdown. So 22 seconds of nine bars. So this is just a very classic way of pulling a pressured, uh, pressure profiled shot. It's essentially uh, just giving it a slow ramp up to that. Whoops, sorry, I got distracted by talking. That's okay. So it's just a slow ramp up to your shot, which kind of helps pull out those flavors and it's less force hitting your coffee at one time. Typically when you pressure profile two, that will um, elongate the shot time. So if you're used to doing like that typical like 24 to 32 seconds range, sometimes it will be longer. Um, it does show me my previous shot time on my app, but I already put that away. Smells really chocolatey. This is Holler Mountain from Stumptown. Yeah, definitely. So it's smooth. This one actually came out a little bright. That might be because of a couple of things. That slow ramp up could have something to do with that. So maybe if I was gonna go back in it, I would um, raise that pressure up a little bit, take it a little bit more uh, blunt, or you can do a ramp down, which is what a lot of shops will do if they're doing pressure profiling inside, and that ramp down cuts back on that acidity. So it's still good. I still would drink this definitely, but if I was going to do it again, that's how I'd make it better. Pretty good though. And then I have my almond milk in my rocket pitcher over here. Open this up, release some of that built up water. Perfect. All right, let's see what I got. Something too on these machines, you don't have to open up the valve all the way. If you do or if you tighten it too much, there's a spring back there that can pop. You just want to do it until it's tight. Typically I would use a separate rag for my milk, but I forgot that. Do one more purge here. Almond milk's so hard to get perfect. So it might be a little bubbly. This is not a barista series either, which does not make it any easier. Yeah, I under aerated that. That is okay. You live and you learn. This is also the first latte I've made today. Oh, but it still tastes really good. <laughs> yeah, so in the cup itself, that chocolate really complements the almond milk and I really like that. Makes it really easy to drink, and I'm gonna take another sip. Yeah, super good. I like the temperature, and honestly, the foam is nice, but every once in a while I forget what it's like to not have foam, so it's also good that way. Mm. So yeah, that is the R60. I have made a mess here, but you know, as I say, coffee is messy. Essentially, this is definitely a machine not for your entry level user, but for someone who wants to do a little bit of tinkering and kind of getting deeper into espresso and learning a little bit more about it and being a little bit more in depth and involved with your coffee. This is what I would recommend if you're interested in making coffee a hobby, if you are a barista interesting and interested in upping your game, or even a roaster who's maybe interested in seeing what your coffee is capable of doing um, and you just wanna tinker around and play with it. And I realized that I said roaster, but this is not a commercial machine, definitely meant for home, um, just for a higher end type of user. So yeah, the Rocket R60. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate having you here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know what questions you have about this super cool machine, and we will see you next time.